Hey, how's it going? How's good you're treating you? It, it's going good. Uh, we moved down here. We actually moved from Utah two years ago, right when COVID hit. Oh, so, wow. yeah. But, hey, I appreciate everything you've been doing. I admire you. And uh, um, I have a couple of questions on how to get set up. So I do medical sales. I'm trying to get out of the rat race. My wife, um, we've gone through a lot this last year. So today is eight months that my wife had a pulmonary embolism and almost oh, wow. died. So we've got four kids, 12 to five. My 12 year old was listening to me last night as I was going through some of your, um, like how to set things up videos. And he's like, yeah, I've got to, let me think how I can wholesale. Cause I kind of, He's got the entrepreneurial mindset and wants to call and do ask things. So um, the thing, like I pulled probates, we've gone and gotten a couple of lists and I've called on some, but I'm willing to, I, we've got some money. I'm willing to invest so I can accelerate everything faster. Yep. So I've gone through your videos, but I, it's a little more complex than I was thinking. I'm, I'm trying to get my head around how to pull whole list off of prop stream, have a VA and I've had a few, just a second, buddy. You're I've fine. had a few, a, a few that I've interviewed or looked at, but how to basically have them call and where it all goes, like on a spreadsheet or how do you keep track of them? What do you do so that then I'm getting them? Cause I, I feel confident on the contract piece, like, once I get a seller and then I, I know I could figure it out from there. But my piece is how do I get as many calls and dials as I can right now to get right. in front of these motivated sellers? Yeah. Whiteboard behind you. Are you a visual learner? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Give me a second. What about? Here. Come here, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. How's it going? Say hi. 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 This is Lachlan. So we do it all for family. So I love yeah. it. All right. So let's bring it down. Okay. So I'll tell you my system, and then you can copy it whatever you want. Okay. So we we have a couple. I, I'm like a left to right guy, conveyor belt, right? Yeah. So I'm a left to right systems guy. So we talk about cold calling VA system. I'll apologize to everyone with the mic. It's going to go in and out. So deal with it. Uh, so I go from, uh, I have a marketing person or me, or whatever, will pull list. I like pulling my own type of lists, but if it's like a probate, I'll have a VA pull it for me, right? Like, so we have list. List goes into a Google Drive. And then it's copied on like my computer or something. So we have, cause I have to pay for this list, right? It's expensive. So I have it on Google drive, right? That Google drive is then going to be skip traced, right? You skipped, right? Use, you know, I use like a list rei.com for like a batch. I have the worst handwriting, but I don't really care. So number one is the list, right? So marketing comes down to lists and marketing channels, right? So list is done. So it's a marketing channel, which is cold calling, right? So I'm going to have a VA for me. They are, they are going to be cold calling, right? Now, someone's got to load up this skipped list into the dialer. So this goes in the dialer. So I, I don't know, I... I don't know how to put this the right way, but this goes into a dialer. So, the so you, VA the, you put the skip list into the dialer for the VA to, to start calling on that, right? Yes. So they are... Are you, are you yeah, using Mojo? Ahead. So Mojo I'm using... Call tools? I'm using Zach Dialer. Exactly. Um, I, actually, I got my first, cold, my first year of cold calling was all from Mojo because Bash didn't have a dialer back then. And it was triple line dialer. Um, I did Zen call right before his ready mode. That was 12 lines. Um, the problem with dialing, I figured out pretty fast is the carriers are kind of crazy. So if you're, if, 
your if your average the most important thing from a dialer if it's a spam likely or something like do you have T-Mobile or anything like that? I've got Verizon. All right, do you have, do you get like spam likely on your phone? Yeah. So spam likely basically is a culmination of that number. They see how many numbers that thing has called and the average duration for a phone. So why is if CVS calls you like a pharmacy, it's pretty important they're not spam likely, right? Their average duration per call is really long, but they call a lot, but that's not really a spam because they're having long conversations, right? If a doctor's office is doing outbound calls, a dentist hundreds a day, and the average conversation is long, it won't be spam. But if I call 10,000 numbers and the average duration is two seconds, spam likely. So this is what I really focus on. So the dialer, I use three lines. So the conversation is a little farther. So my VA is co-calling on a dialer. We want 15 to 20 seconds average of call time because we don't want to be spam likely. This is a huge thing I've seen. And you and use a three, a three line one, right? We use three. When you do 10 line, it's just a lot of them get skipped over because you get like three people answering at once. And then that, that call duration goes to like one second yeah. destroys it. So VA co call on the dialer. They use my simple, they use a two, two step script, right? Script, which is, are you interested? No. And then, uh, number one, are you interested in number one? Or, uh, sorry, are you the owner? Are you the owner? You want to sell, right? Are you on the property and do you want to sell it, right? Once I get a yes that they want to sell the property, this is when things change. Once they want to sell the house, this is not marketing anymore. This goes to disposition. This goes to acquisitions. Acquisitions converts a yes to a contract. Marketing, all this, the only goal is to find a person that wants to sell the property. They say yes to selling their house. That's all my VAs focus on. That's all you want them to do, those yeah. two questions. Right. Who, as you doing medical sales, yep. who can close the deal better? That's Someone what I Philippine, Right? Yeah. Because I mean, I've had a couple like ask, "Hey, do you want disposition? You want us to put it under contract?" And I'm like, "No, I just want I just want to pay for you to go through leads to get me somebody to like talk to, right?" So those are your two questions that you keep them doing. That's it. So the, all this hoopla comes down to getting the yes. And th the point is, hey, that's great. Actually, Ryan's the one who's actually buying the properties. He's actually the owner of the company. All this stuff. What's a good time for him to give you a call back? Okay. Right. We got to look a little more about the property. Ryan will give you a call. See, it's like we said today, setting expectations. You're good to go. Yeah. And that's, that's the, I don't know. I have the board. I, I, I thought you were right. And then, call. so my question then on, if you're going through all those calls, they're putting the ones with yeses into podium, oh, right? Yes. And right. then are, where, what are they doing with the rest of those leads? Like if they answer, if they, have anything if they're the owner but they're not interested do they go in a different column or, or how what do you do with those so i'm doing a lot of high equity just because my local market is like 200 like kind of smallish so if i have 50,000 high equity leads right i have the whole system going so with my 50,000 leads if i do it i i have um January, February, March, right? So in January, this list is going to be hit with, these are going to be my, actually I'll do my vacants, right? F January, I'm going to SMS the list. I'm going to cold call them. And then I do direct mail, right? So like, that's how I kind of move them. So I'll have a vacant list, a high equity list, a government list, right? And I switch them all up. But this list right here, if I cold call them every single month, not much is going to change. Now, it might work, but I found the best on like a big list, a big fat high equity list. Call them uh, about three or four times a year. So this 50,000 vacant list are going to hit the SMS, a cold call, and direct mail. They all seem like it's from a different person, but it's all from me. 
direct mail. And then also, do you break up your list? So do you have like a, a high equity, a vacant? Are, yeah. are they, do you keep them separate in your Google Drive? So yeah, so that's the point of the Google Drive. They're all separated. And then do you load certain ones? Then you're just basically loading certain lists in for your VAs to call, right? Yeah, so this brings me back to a marketing schedule. Yeah. So I have a whole like schedule. I have the whole marketing schedule set for like the month where on, you know, this month we're going to cold call vacants. This, we're going to do this, this, and this. Uh, then I got my like Tennessee. I'm doing this. Like it gets a little complicated, but I create an entire huge spreadsheet because I'm very visual like this. And I see what, what everyone's going to do. There's no question about it. Like yeah. my VAs are going to be cold calling three hours a day from, you know, three to six this list and it's going to take them probably a week to get through this list and then they're going to do the next blah 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 blah. so on that question on the list though when you're going through the list and you're saying it takes a week to get through that list is when like you say you call them once a quarter so this month we're calling this list how does it classify them as hey you've called them is it when they answer or like does the dialer call them once and then says no yeah. answer and then it doesn't call them again or how does that work yeah you can change them up the way that i like the dialer is it just goes to the entire list if you don't answer it then you're just going to get called back in a couple months or whatever because it might be a dead number i still don't know if these are the owners because i'm skip tracing got three phone numbers that come out yeah and the point is the yeses come out the you know never contact me i'm going to sue you they get out yeah. too but honestly like I don't take much out from this. Now, when I re-pull this list every year or every six months, some people aren't vacant anymore. They sold the property, someone died, blah, blah, blah. Um, we get a new one. Uh, but this kind of changes like maybe by five, 6,000 every single time. But the point is I just pull the yeses out. Podio, acquisitions closes it. We keep the marketing going. The shocking thing I found with doing a list is I've marketed it three times. So I'll cold call a 50,000 vacant list in January. Um, April, uh, August, and maybe like December. And I will pull like three deals December, two deals August, one April, and like three January. And it's the same list. It's just the timing's different. And that's how you, that's all cold calling. It's all timing. Um, and that's like I've had deals where I've marketed that person three times a year for like two years, and I finally got the deal now. And they got all my postcards. It just, it wasn't the right time. So yeah. that's why I don't like taking people off. Okay. And then your SMS texting, who do you use on, what's your favorite one now? I use Batch just because they're pretty compliant. Full disclosure, I really love Mojo. I'm only using Batch because I like recording all of my VAs. <laughs> I, it, once they know they're all recorded, it works really well for me. I also have uh, systems with them where I'll actually put my personal cell on this list and I'll put my middle name as like the first name. And I just want to practice and see when I get a phone call, what, what, what am I actually hearing? And they know I might be on the next line. So they're all hundred percent on every single time. Okay. If I get a cold call and I hear a rooster in the back or a baby crying. Yeah. Ne next VA. It's like I'm behind the shoulder, but I'm not. Okay. And so the dialer, you enter that in, put it in the dialer, and then you can get your VA up and going right away. Just get it. Yeah. I trained the VA. Um, I actually, kind of embarrassing. I'm, I'm getting more systems in there, but I have a lot of videos of me just in, in my dorm room of me just closing deals, cold calling, getting yeses, getting no's, making a little course on YouTube, like unlisted videos for my VAs. So I, I do some training, but not most of it. Because they go through the videos of me doing it. Okay. And then I can tap in. Like, I haven't used the dialer yet, but I'm assuming I can tap in and just start calling them also and having having that come to my phone or throw my 12-year-old on there to get some get some reps in. Yeah. I, there, right? I, people are weird with dialers. Some dialers they like, some they don't. I would try all the free trials you can um, and just test them all out. Uh, but... I, there's, there's a lot of good ones out there. I, I just don't think one's going to be better than the other, but you can test them out. Um, 
when you have VAs, it's I, I think it's important to record them just to see if it's going to be good or not. Um, but the, at the end of the day, it comes into a numbers game. And it's kind of fun because it's like, I know if I have them call this, I'm going to get this back. And then at the end of the day, you, you sort of know their habits. And it, 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 you can pretty much predict when you're going to get a deal or a lead or things like that. And you know to a point how much it costs you to get a lead and a deal. Okay. And so is there anything else you put into your list or do they do anything else on the Google Drive or when it's in? If it's a yes, it goes in audio. Like that's it's just a yes and then it goes in. It. I don't want them doing anything else. Why what I want I wouldn't want my acquisitions manager who's really good at closing the deal. Okay. Plus they have accents, right? It's like you like you, like it's gonna be really hard to make that connection. And I want that rapport to be built with the acquisitions manager ASAP. And at the end of the day, they, they got to go back on the phones and get some more leads for me. Okay. Um, and if I'm polling, like, for instance, here in Phoenix, I know that, like, I can, I just pulled a bunch of probates, but it, it makes it, they make it a little difficult. So that's fine. But like, I can get on having them sent to me for 30 bucks a week or stuff like that for the probates. Do I just have them skip trace and then comb through the same? Is that what you're doing with them or? Yeah. Phoenix probates are probably not going to be, uh, they're not even worth my time as my opinion. I, there's just too saturated of a list and that's my pride. That's a big problem. Okay. When I asked her, I, I'm like, there's, there was only, I mean, there's 25 people pulling those consistently, but I'm assuming a lot more. They're just companies that are doing it here. So there's a lot more outside. Okay. All and right. I like eight kids DM me about Maricopa probates. Yeah, probably last month. So, yeah, and I just don't have the cap. I don't have the capability of luxury of time of driving around as much, just with oh, medical situations, you know. Here, hence, this is my first time. My beard is eight months old right now. So, my beard and my hair. Normally, I'm clean shaven. So, but no yeah. worries. Hey, I would tell you. So, obviously, you you want to pay VAs, pay VAs, do all this. This is great. One thing I would consider, which you can't have your son do, is 12. But if you can pay someone to drive for dollars for you, that might be a lot more efficient than doing this on a saturated list. Just something to consider. I pay people to drive for dollars for me. It's one of the best money I spend on my marketing. Like, how do you do that? How do you set that up? And what are your expectations? Of? Like, how do you talk uh, to them and have 15, them drive? 20 for bucks an hour. I pay for your gas. You're tracked. And I'll give you, you know, 5% of the deal. And then you find ugly houses. You put sticky notes on them. Then just go around, look for ugly houses. Okay. Oh, I like it. Um, it just drawing for dollars is the only way I've figured out how to scale it to a point. Yeah. All right, I'll start on this. Get them going. Let me give you. A, let me give you the last one. Brian, yeah. you're very good at sales, right? You can close. Yep. You're in Maricopa County. So one of the cons of Maricopa is very saturated. One of the big pros is you can pay someone to drive for dollars. If you can find four to five kids, which I guarantee you can do, 17, 18, 19 year old, not your kids. I'm sorry. They can't drive yet. You could probably find five kids that are teenagers wanting to get started in wholesaling, scared to death to go on the phone, scared to death. Don't, don't want to sell. They just want to make a quick buck, right? They watch some TikToks of, of wholesaling, right? If you say, hey, if you can find drawing for dollars leads, I will close them for you and we can split the deal. You have four to five people drawing for dollars for you at any time of the day. You get like five of them going, you're going to get a ton of leads. And it's free. You got to split them, but it, it's going to work. Okay. No, that's a good idea. Yeah. I've had uh, some people doing it in Tampa. It works really well. And in my market, obviously. All right. No, awesome. I appreciate your help, man. All right. Keep it up, Ryan. Okay. Thanks, Seth.